Hey y'all, welcome back to Fix Setup Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to drive the ARCA car at Southern National Motorsports Park. Now I know you're probably asking yourself, but what about C-Fixed, B-Fixed, and A-Fixed? They're not going to be here this week. Why? It became really apparent to me as I was recording footage at Watkins Glen that, if anything, I was just going to be wasting people's time, not helping them, because I'm just not that good at road courses in those types of cars, and the best use of my time and yours would be for me to cover what I know best and can do the best, and that's the ARCA car at Southern National. So if you came here looking for how to get around Watkins Glen, my apologies. It's not going to be in this video, and you can move on from here. We'll see you next week. But if you want to learn how to drive the ARCA car, I've got you covered. I also want to apologize for the late upload of this video. I know I try to get them out Mondays, Tuesdays at the latest, but I just got back from a week-long trip to Charlotte, North Carolina. If you follow me on Twitter, you saw a lot of my adventures. I got to see some old friends, make some new ones, and I even got out to the Cars Tour throwback race at Hickory Motor Speedway. It was an absolutely wonderful experience getting to see super late models, late model stocks, and of course, Josh Berry won. No surprise prize there but it was so good to get back to a racetrack it's been far too long for me and the coolest thing was after the race later that night dale jr tweeted out that hickory motor speedway is coming to the iRacing service next month very cool and i envision we'll be covering that track in a future episode of the series i can only imagine how much stuff we're going to tear up there but enough about me, let's get down to helping you out with the ARCA car at Southern National Motorsports Park. A difficult combination, one of the biggest challenges that I think we've seen yet this season. A lot to cover, so let's get into it. Welcome to Southern National Motorsports Park. Oh my gosh, what have they done? <laughs> this is incredible this week. All right, I have already been testing for almost 20 laps trying to figure out what wheel settings I even want to run because I went out with the default stuff and I was wrecking like immediately wrecking so here's what I'm proposing that you do bump up that brake bias to about 70 percent maybe more if you're wrecking on corner entry there's two reasons why one too much rear brake two you're overdriving the entry also I lowered the steering ratio to 10 to 1 I didn't touch the offset. I think the offset's fine. But 12 to 1, which is default, was just too slow for me. And I immediately started going faster when I went down to 10 to 1 and when I upped the brake bias to 70. So that's my recommendation to you. Try it out. See how you like it. But I immediately felt a huge difference increasing that front brake bias and dropping that ratio just a little bit. Well, let's jump out onto the track, take a few laps, and uh, we'll, we'll see what she looks like. But this place is nuts. Four-tenths of a mile, high banked, and very short straightaways. So really, your ability to control the throttle is huge. But you'll notice right away, this thing accelerates so fast. You, you're just going to be short shifting like crazy. And you're not on the throttle for very long around here. Got to get to the brakes early, get the car to the bottom rotate the bottom and get out of the corner but this is one of those tracks where your ability to control the throttle on exit and hit your marks on entry with the brake roll the center be smooth with the throttle on exit that's how you put a lap together here fun little track but can absolutely be a nightmare with other people around you. <laughs> and it's not just wrap the bottom. You've seen I went a little bit faster when I went up the hill a little bit and let the banking carry me. But getting as straight of an exit out of the turns as you can is going to be really, really important. It's like a ballet between your pedals. You really need to start braking sooner than you think to get into these corners. That was my first mistake when I first jumped out here. I was driving in way too deep and the rear end just came around. Back up the corners a little bit 
Meaning you get to the brakes a little bit sooner, you'll be surprised how much easier it is to get in and out of these turns. But you start overdriving and that's what's gonna happen. You're gonna wear out that right rear tire more than the right front. And that's why having, <laughs> that's why having a 10 to one steering ratio is really helpful. This place is insane. You don't wanna ride around up here. It's just, uh, it's pretty tough to ride around up top. You're gonna make most of your passes around the bottom unless you really trust the person on the bottom to not push up. Maybe pinch them a little bit, but I just have a feeling that the uh, the bottom is the way to go. <laughs> it's a fun track, but I can imagine with 25, 30 other drivers, it may not necessarily be that fun. So that was about a 13 lap run or so that I just did. And you can see the lap times are fairly consistent. 15, five, sixes, sevens. There's not a lot of fall off. I mean, depending on how you hit the corners, I don't think tire wear is going to be that big of a deal on the short run. This is a 60 lap race. It'll matter later in the run, but early on, you know, it's just about how you hit that line. So if you can be consistent, it's a huge difference. Could be a tenth or two per lap if you can just be consistent. And looking at the tire wear after that little run, 1% more worn on the right rear than the right front. Again, that's to be expected. The car is very loose. You're fighting it, trying to get the throttle down on exit. The better you are to those rear tires, the better off you're going to be over the course of 60 laps. All right, let's break down that qualifying lap. We'll do it here in slow motion. You can see my inputs next to, uh, over, up, oh, not that way. Oh, uh, there, they're right there. <laughs> you see my inputs there, so we can follow along. So you start off the top, get a good run out of four, and just past the start finish line is where we're gonna hit the brakes. Let's back that up a little bit so you can get a sense of where I'm starting to get to the brakes. Pretty much right as I get to the start of the grandstands there, Going into turn one is when I'm getting to the brakes. And uh, we ride the brakes all the way through as we get the car to the bottom. And you can see it's about 30% brake pressure. That's about all that you need. Maybe 40 to just make sure you get the car to the bottom. And as soon as you feel ready, get off the brakes. Let the car rotate around the bottom off the brakes. You see, I just play with the, the brake a little bit to set the nose. But as soon as it feels settled, start rolling into that throttle. But only that, that 50 to 60%. Like I told you, you know, in previous videos, a great exercise to do, and this is another great place to do it, is practice holding the throttle 50, 60, 70% in the turns to build that throttle pedal discipline. That's a great way to do it. This is a wonderful track to do it with. So you see, I hold that throttle 60, 70% all the way through this turn up until I feel the car settled and I have the traction, the car straight enough to where I go full throttle. I'm not full throttle until this point on the racetrack, past that caution light coming out of turn two is when I'm finally full throttle. So again, it's, it's fine margins, but you got to feel comfortable not being 100% throttle all the time. So we ride 100% throttle all the way down the back straightaway. 
then we set up for turn three. And you can see again how early I'm into the brakes. I come off the throttle into the brakes. Here, I mean, I don't know, pick your pick your vantage point as you will. It'll look a little bit different in the car, but you know, if you're counting dashed lines, it's uh, you know, the the third dash line from the start of the turn, I guess you could say. You know, if we're looking right around here, one, two, three, four. You know, if you want to count it that way, whatever works for you, find a visual reference. And that's where I start getting to the, the break again. Same thing. 30, 25% break, trail break, and it just down to the bottom. Turn three and four is a little bit different than one and two. You got to be a little more patient before you get to the throttle. Again, let the car rotate off the brakes. Then that same 60 to 70% throttle around the bottom all the way through the turn. When do I get to full throttle here? At about this white line, which is the uh, the pit entry cone. is about the point you can get to full throttle, and, and that might have been a hair too soon as I lost a little bit of traction coming out of the turn. That cost me a little bit of time. That was my 14.9 if I didn't get loose right there, but we finished the lap, and, and that's it. So I hope that breakdown helps you on setting a good lap. It's going to be super important to start up front in these races, but... It actually may not matter. It, they're going to be such a bloodbath. The wrecks are going to occur, and they're going to go fast. They could wreck for 15th when you're leading, and in seven seconds, you're going to be on top of them. So, you know, if you want to start up front, that's that. I feel like that's probably a pretty good lap. Hopefully that helps you out. So that's Southern National Motorsport Park, a tough place to get around, but like I said, a really good opportunity to learn throttle discipline. Practice holding that 50, 60, 70% throttle until the car has enough grip to support full throttle. This is a great track to practice that. It really gets you a sense of how to roll into the gas when the car is settled so you're not spinning those rear tires and accelerating that rear tire wear. That's going to be so critical this week. So I think those are the two big things. Throttle discipline, understanding how to hold partial throttle through the turns until you're ready to go full throttle. And then the other thing is backing up corner entry, dialing in that brake bias. A lot of people are going to overdrive the corner entry. They're going to spin out. They're going to push up and wreck somebody. It's going to be ugly. If you can get those two things down pat, I think you're going to be in a lot better position this week. You can't help the guys behind you. If they run you over, they run you over. And if people wreck in front of you and you have nowhere to go, then, you know, that's just the way it goes. But... All you can control is what you can control. And it starts with good fundamentals. And the, the drivers that have good fundamentals are going to be in a better spot to capitalize this week at a tough short track. You can see I put in over 80 laps now just getting around here. And, and it's fun. It's enjoyable. I don't think I'm going to enjoy racing with a bunch of other people. But even if you only do a few races, load into some practices and start practicing the fundamentals, the techniques, the building blocks to becoming a better sim racer. Those two pedals underneath your feet. And this is a track that will absolutely reward you if you have proper technique. And that'll do it for this episode of Fix Setup Weekly. Thanks so much for checking it out. I know it was a bit of a strange one since we only looked at ARCA, but I hope that taking the time to go into greater detail about the qualifying lap, review it from an external perspective like I did, and just give more analysis and commentary about the car and track combination was valuable to you. Uh, time better spent than suffering at Watkins Glen. Again, that wasn't going to help anybody. But if it was valuable, if it did help you out, if it improved your performance or taught you something, let me know I did my job well by leaving a thumbs up on the video and a comment down below. It really does make a world of difference with how these videos perform when you take the time to do that, and I really do appreciate it. Additionally, you can continue to support the channel by subscribing. It doesn't cost you anything, and you can always unsubscribe later, but if you don't want to miss any future episodes of this series, I recommend that you do hit that subscribe button. We would love to have you be a part of this community. Big shout out to the channel members. Thank you so very much, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Until then, have a great week of racing.